Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I posted a video. I'm going to do another video about Unreal Engine uh, in the city sample here. I've been uh, messing with it a little bit. I haven't had a lot of time lately to, to uh, play around with Unreal Engine. Lots of other things going on. Um, but uh, I wanted to make this video to answer some of the questions that people have had about the sequencer and uh, the city sample. And I'm also running uh, Unreal Engine 5.3.1 um, trying to see if um, if I can still run this version with my um, RTX 2070 Super or whatever my, my old uh, video card at this point is. Um, you know, it's it's a little bit slow. Um, some ways it's actually faster than previous versions. It actually, the, the load up time of the application itself seems to be uh, much quicker now. Um, it does take some time to load you know, the city sample in, but it's very large. Um, I found that it's pretty responsive uh, with this video card with the 2070 when I'm just kind of, you know, doing a basic, um, uh, you know, from the template or whatever for Unreal Engine, it's fine for that. But when I get into something, you know, larger with a lot more um, ray tracing and things like that that it needs to do, it seems to really, it kicks the fans up and, uh, um, but at least I haven't had a crash yet. I haven't actually had uh, a crash on 5.3 yet at all. So um, uh, it's pretty good. So maybe, maybe they're optimizing it in some ways to work with older video cards. Um, which is good because I'm not really into upgrading my video card at this point, uh, you know, just for this uh, hobby. So, but anyway, we're going to jump into this and uh, I'm going to kind of go through um, some uh, some of the sequencer things for the city sample. Um, if you uh, haven't already, check out my other video about the city sample. Um, is it just worth it in general with the size? It's, you know, 100 gigabytes. It's pretty large. Uh, unless you just have tons and tons of hard disk space, which some people do, obviously, but but I don't. I had to delete quite a few things uh, off my main system to, to be able to download and to run a couple of different copies of this. Um, but it's pretty it's pretty nice for what you get. You know, you get some uh, the the buildings. You get um, you know some uh, AI people that kind of walk around. You've got some vehicles that some do some things, uh, and it all looks you know great like Unreal Engine stuff does. Um, so anyway, we're going to talk about some of the sequencer stuff. I've had a couple of questions on the comments uh, from the other video. Um, and I guess while I'm speaking of that, uh, you know, if you have any questions about any of this, leave a comment. If you have any suggestions about how I could make this run better or uh, some other just tips in general, be sure to leave them in the comments. I appreciate all of that. I do try to read and respond to lots of comments. Um, so, but anyway, let's get into this. All right, so um, first off, uh, we want to use a smaller map, and so that's what I've got loaded up here. If you go to the, uh, the maps folder here, I'm using the small city level. This is the one that tends to work better for uh, this video card. Um, it has a much smaller uh, world, and so I just kind of grabbed all of this right here, uh, loaded this basic region in, and so now I've got everything. So while it gives you quite a bit of, of um, city to play around with, it doesn't obviously give you the full big city or even uh, the open world. Um, it does just really take a lot of, of GPU power for me that I just I really don't have, um, and it makes it too slow for it uh, for me to be able to get around. So I like this small city, and that's kind of what I'm playing around with here. So the trick to this is um, from choosing the map here, uh, you want to go into the cinematics and the test sequences. Now, like one of these sequences will actually work with the, the, uh, the small city. Um, and let's see, I think that uh, it was this one. Let's see, whichever one I have loaded up here. Let's see. What is this one called? Uh, Skyline to Street Camera. Yeah, so, um, yeah, this one right here, Skyline to, to Street, is the one that I'm using with the small city. And so when I have that open, here's what we get in the sequencer. We get this kind of zoom in on underneath this um, this on ramp here. Uh, so you know you could make an interesting scene here or something. You know, like the camera zooming in on you know your main subject or something, getting out of a car or whatever. You could do something simple with this. Um, so let's see. Uh, one of the questions that I had in the previous video was how to do these long uh, camera sweeps like this, and so. This is a good example of how to do this. So if you go to uh, the camera component here, you can uh, go down to the transform and the location. And the location and rotation are really kind of what you're going to want to mess with here. And so, you know, you, you're starting out, you're setting your keyframe at the very beginning here. And um, I'll typically go from there and, you know, start to go along to where I think it's going to want to change. And like this one, for example, starts to kind of change the position right here. And then it 
it uh, rotates around till it gets to the end point. But as you can see, it's really just a series of keyframes. And really for camera movements, I've found the fewer keyframes you have, the better off it, it looks, a little more natural it looks. If you tend to have a lot of keyframes and a lot of movement, um, it tends to look a little jumpy. Um, and so, you know, unless that's kind of what you're going for, I wouldn't really, really recommend that very much. I'd recommend, you know, keeping as, as few keyframes as possible in the camera movement. So anyway, as you can see, this, this is how um, this is done. It's pretty simple. You just go, um, you know, into the sequencer, you go to the transform of your camera component, you set some keyframes, and you, um, you know, you can either adjust these, uh, or you can actually go into it and move the camera around and set a keyframe from there. I tend to just set a keyframe, select the keyframe, and then I adjust these values a little bit until I can get it, you know, to where I want it to be, like this. So I can move it side to side. As you can see, I'm just changing this right here. So let's see, we'll just undo that. Um, great, so let's make this scene look a little bit more interesting. And uh, we can do that here by going into the uh, environment lighting. And um, one thing I like to do here um, is let's just add some fog here. So you can see the fog density is pretty low. Um, so let's see, let's experiment. Let's just kick it up way high and see see how this looks. All right, so this is, this is pretty pretty dense fog so this is like you know if you were doing a um, you know more of a, a dark gritty scene maybe you want something like like this and obviously you can uh, color correct this a little bit as you after you export uh, the clips and kind of darken it up do a day for night thing or whatever you want to do here you know you want to make sure you have plenty of light in the original clip so that you can uh, have more power to do that type of thing later but let's see let's uh, let's adjust this back a little bit let's see 0.3 oh too much do this. Yeah, that looks better. Yeah, that's not bad. So let's see, you can imagine if we're zooming in here, we've got some nice music playing, some suspenseful stuff. We're coming in to here, it gets to the end, and then maybe we have somebody begin to get out of a car or something like that. Um, anyway, this is just, you know, to answer a couple of questions there about uh, how to um, to change the environment settings, uh, you know, add some fog or whatever to these scenes. Um, also answers the question of, you know, how to change the location and the rotation of uh, your camera in a scene like this for a, like a long shot like this, a, a long uh, zooming shot. Uh, and also, um, you know, kind of shows how, how well this works on, you know, the latest version of this. I, I honestly probably am not going to be making a lot of uh, Unreal Engine videos uh, in the future. My system can barely handle uh, these things anymore, and um, I've really kind of become um, busy with so many other things that I don't really have much time to uh, create films or games or anything else. I'm still very interested in it. I may from time to time you know, create a cinematic or something, um, but I probably will, uh, will lay off of some of the Unreal Engine videos. Obviously, everything that's still on the channel will stay on the channel, and and most of the things that I've created uh, so far still work on, uh, you know, 5.3 and the, the newer versions. Um, if there's a lot of comments about a certain thing, maybe I'll pop on a video, um, kind of like I wanted to do a follow-up with this one just for the people that have been interested. Uh, and I appreciate everybody, um, you know, from the Unreal Engine community watching the videos. Um, it's just kind of become a thing that uh, unless I want to spend a bunch of money uh, on a better system, I'm, I'm not really going to be able to keep up with the things that I want to do nor do I really have a lot of time to be creating um, short films, sadly, at this point. Um, I do hope to get back to it in the future. Um, I appreciate everybody for subscribing and watching. And, um, you know, if you want to unsubscribe because I, I'm not making Unreal Engine videos anymore, than, you know, or Blender videos or any of that, that's, uh, I appreciate the time that you spent on the channel. Um, probably going to make more of music videos, so if anyone is interested in uh, guitar um, stuff, how to learn how to play guitar, that type of thing, probably make a few videos for that. Had some people ask me about that. Um, but otherwise, thanks for watching.